Okay, I started the recording. It's nice to see you all. It's 2020, a new year, a new hope. <laughs> uh, here is the uh, link to the CritPad for all of the notes. Take a look. Um, if you have initiatives or things that you're working on, I'm sorry, I realize I don't say this every time, but if you have initiatives and things you're working on um, that we should really, you feel that we should actually be talking about, then please add it here. Um, I've added uh, Unix FS v 1.5, which I've realized we should have been talking about, or at least flagging here uh, for a long time now, um, and we have not. So uh, it, it's there now. I think Peter's gonna give us a quick update on the spec side of things. Um, Alex is out, out of town at the moment uh, until Wednesday, so he will be back in. Yeah, he knows more about it on the JS implementation side of things. Um, but uh, aside from that, uh, welcome to the IPFS core implementations weekly sync. It's January, it's the 6th, it's 2020, new decade. Um, welcome everyone. Uh, Jacob has volunteered to be a note taker. Thank you very much. Um, if you have, if you're here and have a uh, an update for what you've been working on um, that you would like people to look at asynchronously, then please add it to the bottom of the document. There is a space for you uh, and a template for you to follow. Um, we won't go through it in the meeting, um, but it's just for everyone to to be able to keep up to date with everyone else's progress on things. Um, and other than that. Uh, we have a note taker. If you are if you are here, also please add yourself to your attendees uh, list on the on the document, just so that we know who who is here each time. That'd be cool. Um, and we will get on with going through the initiatives. And initiatives are the the big chunks of work that we we're working on um, uh, that we need to be updated on. So let's let's start with. Um, upcoming and or shipped release things. Stephen, you have written some words here. Oh, um, <clears throat> yeah, so I'm proposing uh, a point release, or sorry, a patch release for GoodFS. Yeah, I guess we have some uh, network crashers um, that are causing people random problems and they're unhappy, obviously. Yeah, also, the current version does not build on 1.13. Uh, we thought about this or doing this a while ago and then decided not to do it because like, the release was right around the corner and the release is still right around the corner. So we, I think we should probably do this. I was thinking about doing it before the New Year's, but I didn't want to say, and here's this nice bug fix release like on New Year's Eve and give people an upgrade then. But now that the holidays have passed, um, it'll take some of my time, but uh, I think it's worth doing this. Unless anyone has objections. I, I, I don't expect it. Uh, how much time? Mm, um, so a, a large part will just be the, the communication and, well, basically the steps we need to do is we need to figure out which patches we want to actually take. So just go through the entire, like all the different changes. Actually, well, first of all, like basically generate a full change log as we're doing the role release. Go through all of those changes and say, okay, which pieces do we actually want to keep? Uh, which is going to be a few things. Uh, and then we cherry pick those to like uh, to the 0 0.4.22 branch and a couple of our repos. So we have to create more branches of different repos. Uh, then like update everything and go like in like like a separate branch branch off 0 0.4.22 because doing a patch on a patch release, which is kind of annoying. Um, that that should take maybe a couple of days. Uh, after that, then communication around like the release process. Like, hey, we're doing this release. Uh, we have to do a short release process, which is like make sure everything is green in C uh, CI, which is true for 0 0.4.22, should still be true. Um, <clears throat> and uh, like make sure this runs well gateways, which should be fine. Yeah, really like, because it's just patch release, it's not, it's not that much to do, uh, but it'll still take a couple of days of just like, you know, making it happen. Um, do we have a rough idea but, how far away we are from a 0 0.5 release? Um, in terms of that, well, that's the next update. Uh, so upgrade testing infra, um, and release process. Uh, we had the holidays, um, so everything went on pause. Uh, but at this point, it works well enough for local testing. Um, <clears throat> so like, if you just want to uh, take it for a spin and uh, like, so one thing we can do right now is like basic DHT tests of like, hey, how does DHT work? Uh, when you're running a bunch of nodes at like some latency and some bandwidth and like some packet loss rate and that kind of stuff. 
uh, it should also be useful for basic bit swap tests. Uh, you can't set variable latency, so you can't like say, well, I want this latency. Well, yeah, no, you can't say like, I want this latency to this peer, this latency to this peer, this latency to this peer. Uh, however, each node can technically set like global latency. It's kind of funky because like you can only set egress latency that is outbound latency. Um, so like if you make your node like have a really high latency, you won't actually affect your inbound, only affect your outbound uh, speed. But that's probably fine for uh, at least approximating and you know, like checking to see like if uh, like this one works. Or like if you have some peers that set like really high egress latency and some peers that set a really low egress latency, or especially some peers that set like a really high, like um, uh, low outbound bandwidth. Uh, then you can see like, hey, do we prefer peers that uh, like have more bandwidth available and stuff like that. Um, so these are tests you can now run pretty easily. Uh, the main missing features are uh, blocking inbound connections, um, like setting latencies to specific peers, uh, and um, uh, running multiple versions of IPFS and stuff like that at the same time. Uh, at least from like the local testing side of things, from the uh, like the big large scale testing side of things, uh, I'm not sure what the correct status is, um, but it's a work in progress. Uh, yeah, how long? I I vote that you do release the patch release and yeah, um, I'm I, I'm kind of more interested in why why we just didn't do it. Uh, before um, and how we can keep the cadence well, going so going forwards instead of yeah. like waiting for this uh, for zero yeah. like so zero point five has been uh, like in the pipeline for a long time yeah. and it, I, I understand that it's been delayed by getting test ground um, sorted. So but I the, think, like the, it would be cool if we could just keep keep the the bug fixes going in the meantime. Uh, yeah. So that there's so not the, this the thinking is that like we aren't doing feature releases, so every bug fix release requires like taking the specific patches we want to include um, and like putting those in branches and getting it all ready. Um, uh, and the motivation previously was, hey, it doesn't build to 1.13, which was not an insanely big motivation because a lot of people were still using 1.12, and it was still building fine there. Uh, and people could just use the pre-built binaries or like patch things, and it was working fine mostly. Uh, the motivation now is this crashing bug, which is a lot more important. So that, that's why that's what's changed. Um, or like we have other bugs, but there weren't like critical things that would actually trigger a patch release. Basically, a patch release usually happens. For this. We want a patch release to happen when like you have something that's actually an issue and people actually upgrade now, uh, where you can't just wait for another release because it, it does take time. A quick question about the panic due to WebSocket issues. We saw that hitting the gateways, like it just sort of spiked one day, uh, but yep. there hadn't been any Go IPFS releases. I'm wondering, no. did anyone get any more information on what no. changed? Okay. No, uh, this is actually really annoying. We have no idea what was causing it. Uh, okay. We found exactly where the bug is, or sorry, we found where the bug was being triggered. Um, we have a patch now that appears to fix the bug because we just take a bunch of locks. We still don't know why we have to take those locks. It doesn't make any sense. Um, we've spent a long time debugging it and trying to figure out like how, like what's actually happening here and why are these things like, Run at the same time when they shouldn't. Uh, basically, the code looks or it looked totally fine. It looked kind of funky, but totally fine. And so we just took locks and did, like yeah, dealt with it. Um, yeah. So like the, the number of like crashes now is much lower. Uh, we're only getting a few people reporting them. For a while, it was like really really high. Um, I don't know what someone was testing, um, uh, but it seemed like someone was testing some kind of version of FPS, and they didn't come to us saying, "Hey, we're noticing a crash." Or like, uh, yeah. So we don't know. Yeah, the gateway since we deployed the patch have barely we've had like one occurrence every three weeks or so now. Yeah, so well, uh, there were two. But which patch was that you deployed? Oh, you deployed a new version of LibGB. I see. Okay. Yeah, but that means the bug's still there somewhere. Uh, the bug is still there, but it's very much attenuated. Uh, in the gateways, in like most most people's nodes are still running zero point four point twenty two. And we have not been getting as many complaints, but people are still saying, yeah, crash this every few days, which is not not good. Now this is all like high loaded nodes. If you have like a like my personal node, just not likely to find I'm running the latest master. Um, but it wasn't crashing very often when it wasn't. So I think get the patch uh, out and so go yeah. and and yeah, just, just continue. Deal with the problem. Yeah. 
Cool. Okay. Um, okay. In which case, uh, the only news I have on JS IPFS is that last year um, we didn't manage to get out a, a pre-release, um, but the the work that um, I wanted to get done has been done. It is literally just a case of going through the tests now and um, fixing them up. And I had very little time over the holidays to actually do that. So, um, so that kind of paused uh, and I picked it up today and there is just a set of tests that need to be done now. And then, then it's, it's done and we can um, release a pre-release. So I wanted to finish that off tomorrow um, and hopefully a, a pre-release can go out the door. So that's that. Um, okay, uh, let's move on uh, to upgrade the testing and inferring process. We covered a little bit uh, about this already. Um, I don't know who's typing right now, but uh, would they like to give another update? Oh, sorry, test ground? I, I just gave that update. Okay, cool. In which case, uh, we'll move on to uh, the subdomain gateway. And Lido, would you like to give an update yep. on this one? Yep. Uh, there's a PR in Go IPFS uh, repo when uh, Stephen Stark is working on uh, adding subdomain gateway support, like native support out of the box to Go IPFS. And we sort of like uh, try to figure it out the more, the most flexible, the most useful way to represent a uh, gateway configuration uh, in like go IPFS config because we got not only uh, the path based gateway when you got like some domain and then slash IPFS slash CID you also got uh, now uh, we are adding a subdomain so you got CID in the host header and we always had uh, the DNS link so there are at least three types of uh, gateways that we sort of need to uh, both support, but also give people flexibility to be able to maybe just run one type, maybe just run DNS link for that one specific domain their own, and they don't want to allow arbitrary stuff uh, to be returned uh, by their gateway if someone points at some other domain at their own IP, things like that. So it's, uh, uh, we, I think we are, we got a pretty good uh, scheme to represent stuff in a way where we can uh, add more features or maybe gateway types or uh, like settings per gateway type uh, or specific host name. Um, so I think if we get uh, like more eyeballs on it uh, and there are no uh, red flags, I think we'll move forward with implementation. Um, I think I'll probably uh, take this over from Steven uh, and uh, do Go and then uh, probably do the same thing in JS to like, ensure we got the same uh, both config and implementation in both. Yes, Steven? In case you notice, I give you a thumbs up on the on the yeah, PR. It looks good. Input it. Yeah. Yeah, I just uh, I've added it to, to like design review section here just to like okay. if someone is like interested or had uh, in the past uh, a specific need around like con configuring subdomain features somehow. Uh, I think this yeah, this is, is re re right. relevant, but yeah, unless there's like uh, any re red flag, I'll probably uh, get to this after my backlog uh, uh, things a little bit. Yeah, that's it. What are the remaining uh, pieces of uh, base 32 and uh, like subdomain gateway that we're we're missing now? So the the like this this config option is um, so this isn't this isn't like it, it's a, not a dependency of of getting it done, but it was it would just be good to have it, or is it something that is? Oh, it's missing? actually it's actually when you try to implement it you real you quickly quickly realize you got like edge cases when you got a local gateway and you don't want to have both a subdomain gateway and path based gateway on the same host name because that you've got basically like the origin separation is useless so you need to have like either uh, so you need to think both 
how this will work in local gateway and stuff like that. So that the config was the hardest part, I think. Uh, now they, the, what's remaining to be done is like implementing it. Uh, so, so it's like the configuration is one thing and now implementing native support for uh, basically what is incoming in the host header to the existing gateway functionality. We got like gateway in Go IPFS and in JS IPFS. Go already looks at the host header for DNS link website. Now it needs to be like extended to support those uh, CADs in uh, the subdomain. I think that will be more or less. I think if we have that, uh, it should be fairly easy to uh, add support for like proxy mode for on a gateway port because that's like a tiny implementation detail more or less. Um, and that's. But, but the most important part is uh, like having support on the local gateway and that will unlock a lot of stuff like on the operating systems which support sub local host subdomains we we could like enable redirect to more secure uh host names on local host um so this is like a blocking all all the remaining stuff and it's uh, not uh, it's sort of like not forcing us to switch to cadv1 as a default uh, we kind of cannot switch until this lands. So this like less prerequisite for this one. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, any quick questions for Lido before we move on? All right. Okay. Uh, so next up is distributed signaling. Yeah, that'll uh, be on hold, but as soon as we wrap up the async await refactor, uh, I'll get back on this. Great. Um, uh, and is uh, Aiden or Hugo here? They are not to give an update on. Oh, here we go. Nothing you planned. Okay. All right. Great. Um, so adding performance. Does someone want to update us on this? I don't think we have either. Sure. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I'll give the Gilded versions there. Um, <clears throat> Uh, we've merged asynchronous writes uh, with Badger. Uh, so if you need to Badger data store, it's you know, like twice as fast, even on SSD. Um, so it's quite nice. Um, I have not done manual testing on the hard drive, but I expect it to be faster because they've higher latency. Um, actually, I have another update that's somewhat well, actually, not related to this. It's related to CID v1. Uh, Go has switched to providing multi hashes instead of CIDs now. Uh, and the DHC has switched to accepting arbitrary byte strings. Uh, as provider keys instead of trying to validate them. Um, uh, this means that if you were announcing CIDV ones and now trying to find CIDV zeros, there could be some issues there. But this is pretty uncommon because most people are still using CIDV zero. Uh, CIDV zero will still continue working as expected. Yes, Peter. Uh, what is the forward compatibility path for older clients that look at the DHT and get a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't validate? Uh, so they will get stuff that validates because uh, multi hashes are valid CIDV zeros. Okay, so we so we basically remove the validation preemptively. The stuff that we still put on yeah. DHT fully validates for now. Yeah, no, yeah. Perfect. So we, we've yeah, we preemptively removed the validation. Um, we aren't actually using that. The only thing we're putting now are CIDV zeros, which still valid. Or sorry, sorry multi hashes, which are CIDV zeros, which still validate. We just removed it because like there was actually no reason for it. The only thing we really need to validate was like. It's not too long, which we weren't validating. Cool. Okay. Any other questions on this? Cool. Thank you, Stephen. Um, oh yeah. Okay. So migration to multi hash keys. That no work has been done on that. That's on hold temp for now. Um, Dirk, do you have a bit swap update for us today? Uh, I don't have too much of an update. So basically, I've been working on porting the proof of concept changes I've been making uh, to JavaScript version of BitSwap. Um, so I, it's more of a question, I guess, like, uh, I guess for Stephen, um, I'm trying to decide whether it's worth taking another swing at the uh, uh, test ground stuff, or I should wait a little bit until until it stabilizes, until it's sort of a bit more polished. I think it should be ready for testing uh, Bit swap, especially around like setting uh, latencies and bandwidths and like seeing what happens there. Um, it's not going to be ready for testing multiple versions of bit swap, uh, but it should give you a, a decent like 
like so making a test plan it like spins up a set of actually you already have, already have a test plan uh but like improving that especially like set latencies and like see what happens like does it pick the right nodes i think is worth it uh, it's going to be again a bit funky because um like uh you could you can only set egress latencies so unless you like if i have some node and i set like really high egress latencies and then, like other nodes set low egress latencies and they're not symmetric then like like it'll take me a long time to send it to you but you'll take you less time to send it to me but at the end of the day like the swap shouldn't actually care about this like it should it should look as if it's just like a, a single like we only really care about the round trip latency not like the the unidirectional latency if that right. makes sense yeah um I get, like one other thing I, I was kind of running into before is the way that I've written my test plan. It's kind of like a generic test plan that you supply parameters to. Um, but then like there didn't seem to be anything within test graph for orchestrating, running a whole bunch of these with different parameters. Like I want to test. I see. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that is there yet. I don't even know if that's currently on the plan. Um, it's obviously necessary, but uh, if you can make do without it, that would be great. <laughs> uh, because like that's just it's not even a plan feature yet. Um, if you can't, uh, then could you come to the test program meeting and bring this up? Uh, yeah. Okay. That's feature that, that makes sense. Okay. Thank you. That's cool. So, so at the moment you won't be, so you won't be able to uh, test against multiple versions of BitSwap, but you'd be able to uh, you test your new code with lots of new uh, nodes that are also new code, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Um, and then for like the, for test plans, c can you just create lots of test plans and then just import your original one and give it parameters? Like, create test plans for hard-coded parameters if you can't do the parameterizing? So the, uh, the problem is like, you need to spin up the test cluster from outside and then tear it down and spin up again, tear it down. So in theory, you could do this within a single test where like you can have a test with a bunch of stages and like everyone like syncs around one stage and syncs around the next stage and syncs around the next stage. Uh, so like you, you could actually, that's more like doing this, like where you can set a set of parameters, which is like test this through this, this through this, this through this, and like cross them. And that would be the settings. And then in the actual test case, you'd have a for loop. Uh, and like the very first thing would be like, you know, do the basic setup, start everything. Um, and then like, like internally, you just make like spin up all of your, your nodes, shut them down, spin up all of your nodes, shut them down, spin up all your nodes, shut them down. Um, it, it's not perfect because like, you would want to make sure that you don't have like cross contamination between the test rounds, uh, but it, it would actually work. Um, it's not the best way to do this though. Like ideally we like, you would be able to specify a set of parameters and then tell test ground, hey, and here is the matrix of parameters I want to run. Gotcha. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, so moving on. Uh, yeah, hit the async await stuff. Uh, Jacob, would you like to go first? Sure. Yeah. So we are going to work towards an RC this week. We'll probably publish another uh, pre release tonight with all of the latest fixes that we have. Um, and then try to get an RC out the door this week, uh, pending some finalized integration with JSIPFS to make sure we've worked out any of the major bugs. Um, and then we'll just be working on finishing up the examples and then getting all of our uh, interop tests um, finalized with Go. And that is, I think, it. Nice. Uh, cool. Um, yeah, things are looking good so far. I'm so in JSIPFS, that I'm currently just chugging through the test. Like I said before, I've, I've done ba I've basically done all of the work that I wanted to do on it, and it's just getting test passing, and I'm finding um, bits that I need to change or bits that I didn't change that I should have changed and, and stuff like that. So um, the majority of them are now passing, and I'm hoping to finish the tests uh, tomorrow um, because there's not that many more to to get done. Um, and so yeah, there's there's the core interface tests are passing, the CLI tests are passing, the HTTP API tests are passing. Um, uh, and the, I say there's some other 
other core tests that need to be sorted um, and the the swarm api tests for all of those things are are currently being skipped and that's um, partly due to some issues with the new libp but it's part of the going to be part of the integration that needs to get resolved um, but i'm sure it, it, it should be pretty easy to, to sort out um, so yeah we are approaching the end of that uh, which is great um, all right uh, and so if no one has any questions on that then it is uh, the Unix best version 1.5. Uh, what is going on with that? Right, so uh, yeah, I will give an update on Alex's behalf. I actually came into this effort pretty late, uh, but basically where we are at with that is we have uh, an agreed upon placement of the metadata, which still remains optional. Uh, we know where it's going to be. Uh, within a directory structure, basically there will be a separate block between uh, the directory and the actual data, uh, which will contain the necessary pieces. Uh, and this block is supposed to be small enough that it can be inlined into each directory entry, but it's still a separate block. And uh, the idea is that whenever we add uh, files, uh, in the future that the CID that we print out is the CID of the metadata block, which then points to the actual data. We don't get the actual raw data CID out uh, in the default configuration. Of course, this, this is like way down the road, but that's kind of the, the idea. Uh, the actual metadata that we're storing right now, we're concentrating on M time and uh, permission bits slash uh, pretty much the rest of the stat structure. Uh, on the permission bits for now, we are uh, only storing the bottom 12 bits, which is uh, the nine permission bits plus uh, sticky uh, SGID and SUID. And uh, on the M time, we are almost finished figuring out how to do it exactly. We have a bit of a disagreement what to do with unspecified M time, whether to treat it as zero or not. Uh, this conversation is really going on right now. Um, and as far as implementing this, Alex is working within JSIPFS. I linked the main PR, and there have been several PRs on top of that uh, that already merged. I cannot speak for him how far along this is in terms of being able to actually work on the CLI, but uh, he already is decoding stuff from the, you know, from the API calls and when something comes from the network. So that's good progress there. And on the Go side, as far as I know, we haven't started anything yet. It's kind of Alex's thing is the pilot for this to make sure that, you know, that it works and uh, uh, we'll go from there. That's it for now. Cool, thank you. Yeah, uh, from the JS IBFS side of things, the um, PRs that Alex has submitted, I, I think he's done with the, the work. It's just uh, spec changes and things around that, like little final bits, I think, uh, that need to be sorted out. Um, and yeah, then it all needs and, to and, get And merged. tests. And tests, yeah. Yeah, he, has, he already has a bunch of tests, um, so yeah. Uh, we can always do with more um so yeah that's cool um go ypfs side of things like um do is there any plan for who might be able to get on jump on that or um are we waiting for someone to to put their hand up like alex <laughs> uh, i think the plan was originally alex uh i'm not sure at this point or well, Alex or um, Peter, but I know Peter's working on the content address. Your chart, <laughs> content based chunking. It depends on timing, and priorities. Uh, I mean, once the the, the actual um, cycle started, basically where it turns on the that I might get some time, but this will be probably not before last week of January, if not later. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm not raising a hand yet. Gotcha. Okay. It is nice to have a spec finalized and, uh, well, nearly finalized and a pilot implementation in the, in the pipeline. Uh, anyway. 
Okay, cool. Um, in which case we have finished the uh, bit about um, initiatives. I'm sorry we are running over time at the moment. Um, what's up next? Uh, design review proposals. So Lytle, is this you just asking people to comment on the subdomain gateway? Oh option yeah, config? It, yep. it just, it just in the case someone is reading notes and just scrolls to proposals. So it's the same thing. <laughs> Gotcha. Okay. Uh, any blockers or asks this week? No. Nope. Uh, any other questions that you want to ask or anything for the parking lot? Uh, I have a random moment. Um, sure. I don't think I brought this up here yet. GoFS has passing tests. They're all passing. It's actually green. It's nice. Um, I just thought I'd bring it up. Oh, also, uh, for the design proposal, please put your name down if you're interested. Uh, if there's no one actually interested, then we'll just go with we have a proposal. I will add my name. Okay. Um, perfect. Uh, all right then. Um, in which case, we've reached the end of the document. Um, at the end, uh, so Jacob will submit a PR to team management uh, repo on IPFS, uh, and you can uh, look at the notes from the meeting there. Thank you very much for coming, everyone, and um, I'll see you next time, I guess. Bye. <laughs> oh, sorry. Bye. <laughs>